I call on my friends, family, and loved ones to rise up against my real killers, the U.S. government. For what will happen to me is only a result of their complacency and criminality. My message to my beloved parents, save me some dignity and don't accept any meager compensation for my death from the same people who effectively hit the last nail in my coffin with their recent aerial campaign in Iraq. I died that day, John. When your colleagues dropped that bomb on those people, they signed my death certificate. I wish I had more time. I wish I could have the hope of freedom and seeing my family once again. But that ship has sailed. I guess all in all, I wish I was an American. James Foley, uh, I, I don't even know what to say. Joining us now as we welcome you back to the show is Bernard Kerrig, former New York City Police Commissioner and Interim Minister of uh, Interior of uh, Iraq. Good to see you again. Thanks. I, you know, obviously with a, with a sword hanging over his head, he was forced to say that. Um, but still in all, I, I don't know how he was so brave at that moment facing death. It was, um, I, I got to be honest. I believe that every American and every person that lives in freedom, lives in a democracy like ours, they need to watch the video. They need to see the savagery. They need to see the barbaric behavior of these people because they have to understand if we don't stop this, if we don't stop ISIS, if we don't stop radical Islamic uh, terrorists from doing this and more, they're going to be in a neighborhood near you. They're going to be in our communities. They're going to be in this country. Um, and there's no better way to understand it than to watch that video. As tragic, as barbaric, and savage as it is, people have got to understand this is an element that is mass murdering Christians all around the world. It's an element that is enslaving, uh, raping, uh, killing women, um, uh, more than we can count. Um, it's uh, an element that wants the annihilation of the Jewish people in Israel. This has to be dealt with um, far more aggressively than we have in the past, and, uh, and it's got to be done now. And our president came out, made a statement today. Uh, if, if what you just said is a 10 and a home run, he bunted a single. I mean, he just either doesn't get it or is unwilling to go there or define it as for, as for what it is, define the threat for what it is to us. He keeps talking about how it's a threat to the people of the region. The Iraqis have to reject them. I mean, <laughs> how do you reject them? Well, listen, it, it is a threat to the region. Yes. It's a threat to the region. It's a threat to Iraq and Syria right now. It's a threat to their neighbors. It's a threat to some of our greatest allies in the region, which is Jordan and Israel. Um, but it's a far greater threat, I think, uh, especially when you have the border circumstance that we hear, have here in this country. These people are going to get in here. Um, we're going to have homegrowns, uh, whether they're uh, here in the United States or they're in England. If, uh, if you notice, if you watch the actual video, the terrorist um, has a pretty substantial British accent. Um, that, that is something that should be extremely, extremely concerning to America, to Britain, and to others around the world. Yeah, and David Cameron, I know, uh, uh, canceled his vacation and came back uh, to, uh, to wherever he goes to uh, attend to this, uh, this matter and address it. Um, let, let's move on to, uh, to Ferguson um, and, and what's going on there. Uh, I want you to hear uh, some talk on CNN about, uh, you know, the police, the, the, the actions of the police, and what we've been hearing right along through the media. Let's roll that. These are armed police with machine, uh, not machine guns, with, with semi-automatic rifles, with batons, with shields, many of them dressed for combat. Now, why they're doing this? I don't know, because there is no threat going on here, none, that merits this. Uh, in the expert police opinion of Jake Tapper, I guess. Well, listen, uh, I, I've been pretty vocal on the initial response by the police and, and the law enforcement agencies when you had peaceful protesters out there with their hands up and you had semi-automatic weapons trained on them. 
Um, that being said, what I've seen over the last several days uh, need, requires a very aggressive police response. Um, disur disturbance control, uh, riot control response. Um, do you need some of the heavy weaponry that I've seen out there? You may need it uh, as a reactionary force. It should be off in the outs in, in the background. Uh, there has been gunfire just about every night um, that these uh, these guys have been out there. Uh, but you can't let people destroy personal and private property, throw Molotov cocktails, and shoot guns in the midst of crowds. Uh, you can't do that, and the police are going to have to respond. Uh, and I think that's what we're seeing. But I would leave that up to the police experts and not the media and not the, the critics. Let me ask you this. We have a couple of minutes left. If the police version of, the, uh, of what happened is true, if he asked them to move from the middle of the street and they said no, and he tried to get out of his car and we, the door got slammed on him, got punched in the eye socket, broke two bones, the gun, they struggled for the gun, the, gu he, the gun went off, ground runs, and then circles back and says, you're not going to shoot me, and comes towards him. The cop is dazed a little from the punch in the face. Was he justified? If that's the way it happened, is that justification for a cop to shoot? I would, I would imagine it is. You know what, Steve? I, I hate the Monday morning quarterback. Um, it's going to be looked at by a grand jury. I think that's going to be uh, strongly looked at um, because, you know, we've heard numerous stories that he was shot in the back that wasn't true. Uh, it, there's just a bunch of conflict uh, that has come out of this. But I think uh, the most recent findings and the things that we now know to be true um, is going to play a big part in determining whether the cop was justified or not. Do you think he'll get a fair shake or political pressure will... Uh... Well, I, I got to be honest. I don't think he's getting a fair shake at all. I mean, if you're talking about, um, you know, uh, having an influence on the jury pool, um, he's been crucified by the entire uh, country, if you will. The governor. Uh, uh, was there a, a, a lot of people have, 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 have slaughtered this guy's... Uh, um, ability to have a fair trial. Okay, very interesting. We'll watch it closely. Thank you for coming back. Appreciate Thanks, it. Steve. Bernard Carrick, former New York City Police Commissioner. And uh, we'll be back with more of the Steve Malsberg Show. But uh, first, stay tuned because coming your way next is your Newsmax Now update right here on Newsmax Television.